What's up guys, Rogue9 here and Ubisoft have just reactivated the Rainbow Six Siege test servers with a build of the game that includes some long awaited and really exciting balancing changes for Lion, Capitao and team killing. This video is really in two parts. First, I show off how the reworked gadgets for Lion and Capitao are planned to work in future and then I will go into a bit of a discussion around the new team killing damage reflection system because the fact is there are some serious issues with this as it stands right now. But let's tackle these topics one at a time. Off we go. Lion has been out for just over a full year now and to say that a significant rework of his EE1D gadget has been long awaited is somewhat of an understatement. But finally we are now so close, with the nerf going onto the test servers we can only be a matter of days or maybe a week or two away from these changes going onto the live servers. This is what the patch notes tell us about the rework. The devs have reduced the ability warning from 3 to 1.5 seconds, reduced the scanning duration from 4 to 2 seconds, replaced the scan outline by a red ping debuff, increased the number of charges from 2 to 3 and reduced the ability cooldown from 27 to 15 seconds. In addition to that, Vigil's ability, the ERC7's cloak, makes him immune to the lion scan. So the active time for the gadget has been cut in half and shortening the disruption caused to the defenders makes it much harder for the attacking team to capitalize on this. And even if you can force a defender to move during the scanning period, they will no longer be highlighted by an outline but instead will receive three alibi style pings in very quick succession. Scanning defenders will still reveal their identity but the brief pings will make it very difficult to actually get a kill compared to how the EE1D used to work in the past. Further to this, Vigil's cloaking ability is being buffed to also hide him from the scanning technology making him a very dangerous counter player to any team running a lion. As an attacker you can no longer fully rely on the lion scan protecting you from a roaming Vigil. I also went ahead and tested how Kavera and Mute would work with the new scanning mechanic. Mute's jammers were recently buffed so that walking into them after a Dockerby call had already started would cut off the call. This buff has not been transferred to work against the EE1D. If you are in the area of effect of a jammer as the scan goes off, the jammer will block you from being detected but if you're outside of the Mute radius and get detected walking into the jammer will do nothing for you. In addition to this, Kavera's silent step ability will not protect her against line scans, confirmed. Now these changes are significant nerfs to the EE1D and so in order to make Lion not completely redundant there are also some minor improvements as highlighted in the patch notes, he gets one extra scan and his cooldown has been reduced to 15 seconds down from 27. So the summary is that Lion will have more scans that he can use in quicker succession but the effectiveness of the scans is greatly reduced. I think it is safe to say that Lion's reign of terror is finally coming to an end. Yes, his gadget is still a one click low risk global ability but the effects have been trimmed back to a point where we can finally call him a low risk low reward operator. Will his ability need tweaking in future to make him even weaker or could he now be underpowered? Time will tell but I think most of us will agree that if he does end up becoming a bit underpowered that's perfectly acceptable. The changes to Capitao's crossbow are built upon the rework that had already been on the Burnt Horizon test servers a few weeks ago. Reducing the damage per tick from 19 to 12, the size of the area of effect is increased, the area takes 2 seconds to reach its maximum size, the arrow is affected by gravity after 10 meters. Reducing damage from 19 to 12 points per tick is definitely a nerf but since the ticks are once every 300 or 350 milliseconds and yes I tested it and the ticks really are first 350 milliseconds then 300 then back to 350 and so on. I don't know why but that's just the way it is. Because you basically get 3 ticks per second the bolts are still plenty dangerous enough. Sure, before the nerf inhaling the flame gas cloud whatever it is would have taken you down to 5 health in 1.6 seconds whereas post nerf it will take 2.6 seconds to go from full health all the way down to 4. That's an extra second to live, great but like I say, don't be fooled, the bolts are still plenty dangerous enough. 
The size increase of the area of effect is about a third, up to a diameter of around 6 meters now, where before it was an estimated 4 meters. This will make it easier to block off wider corridors, but it will take 2 seconds for the area of effect to grow to its full size. And in addition to this growth time, the area of effect is now blocked by objects. So beforehand, for instance, hiding behind a deployable shield was completely pointless because the fire effect would simply ignore it. After this update goes live, the effect will sort of flow across the floor and it will have to make its way around obstacles. This makes the bolts harder to use effectively and removes a whole bunch of unintended uses for the gadget. And last but not least, there is of course also the new gravity effect beyond 10 meters. Since introduction, Capitao's crossbow bolts have always flown, well, straight as an arrow. But after this patch, we will all need to get used to a bit of a ballistic curve if we want to use the fire or smoke bolts at longer ranges. This again increases the skill required to use Capitao and also removes certain exploits. Hooray! Finally, the much-anticipated reverse-friendly fire mechanic is also live on the test servers combined with a forgive system, yet again a feature that has been on Rainbow Six players' wishlists for absolute ages. The way it works right now is that once a team kill takes place, the killed player will have the option to forgive or punish the offender. If the choice is that the kill was accidental, then the game continues as before without any changes. If the kill is flagged as a purposeful team kill, or if no choice is made, then the damage reflection becomes active for the killer, and this also applies to anyone killing the hostage in hostage mode. Once the system is activated, any firearm damage the killer does to teammates for the rest of the match is simply mirrored onto them, and this once again includes damage done to the hostage. Any stun or concussive gadgets on the other hand will still work on the teammates and their effects are not reflected. This makes perfect sense because otherwise an attacker could flash out an entire room while his teammates walk in without being affected. This would be OPAF, so no, that's not going to be a feature, but I thought I would test it anyway just to be sure. Now all of this might still look pretty simple, right? But there are a few more details that are worth highlighting and in fact upon further testing I found out that the system in its current state is actually quite confusing and definitely needs some more tweaking. After the reflection mechanic is active, throwing objects at teammates will still continue to do damage to them so it's not reflected. I guess you could use this to continue resetting teammates after this update goes live, but with the new 20% health regain system, resetting isn't all that useful anymore anyway. Beyond that, the patch notes tell us that when a player uses a unique operator gadget to deal this damage, reflected damage will impact the gadget itself. And this is definitely true for some gadgets such as Maestro's Evil Eye or Twitch's Shock Drone, but here things already become somewhat inconsistent because when you use Twitch's drone to zap a friendly gadget, your Twitch drone dies. But when you use the Evil Eye to zap friendly gadgets, nothing happens. You just lose points for destroying a friendly gadget. Shooting a friendly gadget or drone will also not reflect any damage onto the shooter, so it's just the Twitch drone that is the odd one out here. Maverick is another exception because even though his Suri Torch is a unique gadget, it still reflects damage onto the operator like a firearm instead of onto the gadget, which would of course be silly. But things get even more confusing because there are plenty of other unique gadgets that will keep doing team damage. For instance, Smoke's Canisters, Fuse's Cluster Charges, Ash's Breaching Grenades, Capcan's EDDs and Capitao's Crossbow are all unique gadgets as well, but they don't reflect damage onto the gadget and they don't reflect damage onto the offending player themselves. Even if a player has damage reflection active, all of these lethal unique gadgets will still do team damage and the same goes for all other lethal gadgets like grenades, claymores, nitro cells, impact grenades, you name it. And that is a huge problem in my eyes. With this update, the team kill auto kick feature is being removed and that makes sense because players are only supposed to be able to commit one team kill before they end up committing suicide every time they shoot a teammate. But if all explosives and deadly gadgets still allow team killing, then a truly toxic player could still kill his team with smoke canisters or fire bolts and he or she won't even get kicked for it anymore. That just cannot be. If if this system goes live like that, then we are actually taking a step backwards because team killers can just use explosives or gadgets and they will get away with it. 
What we will need is a system that differentiates for each gadget. It makes sense that fuse charges don't reflect damage because then we just end up with a new strat where fuse fires his pucks into the objective while the rest of his team charge in without any danger. Only fuse dies and that would be dumb. So fuse still needs to be able to team kill. You could argue that the same should also be true for claymores or capcan traps because it's not really the player's fault when a teammate stays too close to the explosives as they go off. But this cannot apply to other explosives because otherwise we would leave a huge loophole in the whole system. So is the solution that other deadly gadgets reflect damage instead? Well that's not really a great idea either because the few sacrifice tactic could kind of also be used by attackers with grenades or firebolts. It's not easy for sure, on the one hand you either leave huge loopholes in the entire system and trolls will exploit those to commit unpunished team kills, or on the other hand you will leave the game open to innovative new sacrifice tactics that could end up game breaking. Maybe the only solution is to double up on the damage once a purposeful team kill has been committed. So if someone uses a deadly gadget and damages a teammate, the damage is reflected to avoid leaving loopholes, but at the same time the damage also applies to the teammate to avoid sacrifice tactics from taking over. So basically both players die, the teammate and the killer. I admit that dealing damage to both players is not the perfect solution either, but maybe out of the three options it's the least bad. And anyway, the whole conundrum only becomes an issue if a team kill is confirmed as purposeful, so maybe that's not so bad, maybe it won't affect the game that much? What are your thoughts on this problem and which option do you think is best? Reflect all damage including explosives and gadgets, don't reflect gadget damage or apply it to both players. What do you think is the least terrible option here? Let me know in the comments section below and while you're there feel free to like the video if you liked it or dislike if you didn't. Many thanks to Wilder117 for the help with all of the testing last night and with that thank you everyone for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.